that finally right monkey off the back four game losing streak snapped five game conference losing streak snapped 10 to 6 your final score a lot of good to talk about and some not so good to talk about as well that was a bit of a mixed bag tonight you saw some great things happen for LSU and then you saw the problems that landed them in the four game losing streak or the five game conference losing streak really pop back up and what I would just before we get too deep into it what I would overall classify tonight as is just a, a really good step in the right direction right they didn't solve any major problems tonight they didn't you know figure out the secret sauce tonight but they won the game and that's ultimately what was the most important and again like I said there were some positives that we will obviously go into here as we get a little deeper so y'all smash the like button get subscribed up to the channel if you haven't already it's greatly appreciated as always, LSU a winner, 10-6, to 6, and, and share it as well. Um, all right, so let's dive right into it. Holman was dialed in those first three innings, man. Nine up, nine down. Uh, let's see, that was six punch outs in the first uh, three innings as well. I mean, just he's absolutely dialed, and you needed that. When you look at what Grayson Carter did to LSU, really kind of the first few there, made it through the lineup. Well, made it through the first six of the lineup, six up, six down. It's what we talked about. Hard fastball, uses it a lot, you know, high upper 90s. That was as advertised. What really hampered him was the breaking ball just wasn't there. And it, it never really is for him. Well, I don't want to say it never really is. He just, he uses, he uses the fastball, you know, most. And... In doing that, when he doesn't have the breaking ball like he didn't tonight, it's going to make it even more difficult, and he really struggled. But got through the, the top, you know, the uh, the first six unscathed. You go to the bottom of the third, and y'all was LSU's best offensive inning in a month, and it just really wasn't even particularly close. Really wasn't even particularly close when you say it's his best, their best offensive inning in a month. Um, that's what it can look like. Like, and here's what I mean by that. You had seven, eight, nine do up. Pearson leads off with a homer. Paxton Clean comes up, so you're at one nothing. Paxton Clean comes up next. He falls down in the count, 0 2, works a walk. So you have a run in, runner on first, who was down in the count, nobody out. You go bunt. Milam lays down a perfect bunt. Third baseman double clutches. He beats it out, and now you're in business. First and second, nobody out order flips and LSU to their credit they did not they did not let up they got the clutch hits when they needed to and ultimately you put up six runs in that inning it that's what it can look like and when I say that I mean because it it lengthened the lineup like the lineup felt really long in that inning didn't it because you got the production from seven eight and nine that you needed and I mean, it was awesome. You just you had big hit after big hit, none bigger than Brady Neal. I mean, at that point, look, LSU, LSU had uh, three on the board, but you want more. And Brady Neal comes up, and that was after Jones has that check swing, check swing, and it works as good as a bunt. You put runners at second and third, and Neal comes up backside single, and you drive in two, and there you're up five nothing, and you add another run later six nothing and you feel great credit luke holman he comes out shut down inning how often do we talk about that how often do we talk about that you need the shut down inning holman had it great you come back out you add three more that's what you're looking for for this offense constant pressure now we'll get to where it didn't happen later in the game but early constant pressure that was fantastic um highlighted there by travinsky with a you load the bases two outs travinsky singles and you blow the game open at that point, nine to nothing. The disappointing part is in the top half of the fifth, Holman gives up the four spot, three out of those four runs with two two outs, which is something we talked about, two out base runners. I'm gonna get to that because that was a problem for LSU again tonight. Um, but the disappointing thing for Holman in that inning, nothing was hit hard. Like he had a no hitter going into that inning, a little flare to right breaks it up. And the homer that was hit that ultimately put the three spot on the board looked like a lazy fly ball off the bat it just kept going and there really wasn't that much wind tonight but what wind there was I guess aided it enough and it got out of the park so you look at there you have a four spot on the board and nothing was hit hard Holman's line's gonna look a lot worse than he actually pitched 
and that's obviously because of what happened in the top of the sixth where you have, you know, leadoff man reaches, the first leadoff man of the game reaches, the only leadoff man of the game reaches. So that's massive. Big check in the, the box for that, for LSU. Um, but that happens. And then you, uh, you have the error by Braswell. He should have been out of the inning. You have the error by Braswell. It extends the inning. Ultimately allows two runs to score. Five of the six Vanderbilt runs scored with two outs. And that's just – that continues to be a problem for this team. The good news is the offense was good enough tonight to overcome it. But that's something LSU needs to continue to work on. So when you look at it from a leadoff man perspective, one out of nine, that's great. Like that checks the box giantly. Having five out of six of their runs score with two outs, not great. Having an error – not great uh that you know that extended the inning that's not great um but you'll work with that more the other thing i want to point out said it was a bit of a mixed bag right there were some good there were some bad the bad is obviously what we just talked about with the two out base runners the other part of the bad is lsu's offense while they scored nine runs in the first four innings they went in the shell and that's something they have to work on they have to work on that part of it because for a time, until Jones singled in the eighth, LSU didn't have a hit since Kling's double in the fifth. And Vanderbilt did not use their top bullpen arms at all. I mean, they were down. They weren't going to. Everyone Vanderbilt brought into this game tonight out of the bullpen, none of them had an ERA below five. None of them. Now, they finished. Some of them finished below five because they pitched really well. But that's something. That's the next step this offense has to take. We talked about that on the preview. LSU has been good against starting pitching. It's the bullpens that they have not been able to attack. And Vanderbilt's got a good one. And a lot of it is left for the next week. So that was something obviously you didn't love seeing them kind of go into the shell. But in the same vein, you get the leadoff walk in the eighth inning. And Jared Jones comes up with a huge two-out hit. Uh, a huge two-out hit there that ultimately – you have an error in center field, second error of the game. I want to touch on that. Second error of the game for Vanderbilt, and that scores your insurance run. How about Griffin Herring? We'll get back to the errors in a moment, but how about Griffin Herring? Slams the door, three and a third, shutout innings. Struggled when he came into that six. It was a really tough spot, but, man, when he settled in, he settled in. That is such a luxury to be able to have Holman Herring on Friday nights, or Thursday night in this case. That's that's massive, y'all. We've talked about it. It's such a different look. It's it's just it's great it's a very big luxury and you're going to be okay uh going forward with that combo so another major tip of the hat to, to herring the out he got in the sixth inning was massive with the bases loaded and vast line at the plate because at that point it is a three-run game and if he gets on two more runs score and the lineup flips that was a huge out and then he settled in he settled in and, and he was awesome the rest of the way. A little hairy in the ninth, but it wasn't ever going to be wasn't ever going to be busy. Uh, wasn't ever going to be easy for them to snap this streak, right? This is what I'll say, and we'll look towards tomorrow real quick. One thing we highlighted in the preview was Vanderbilt's fielding. Vanderbilt came into this series with eight errors in nine conference games. They leave tonight with ten errors in ten conference games, and they, it cost them runs. You look at that third inning, that's really what jump started it, right? You had the the um the homer by Pearson, the walk from Kling, the bunt single, and then and then you end up uh Bingham hits a tailor made double play ball and Vandy air mails it. You've been looking for something to go your way, that was something that went your way. And it was huge and it jump started that whole inning. Yes, you got a run off of it just in that immediacy, but it extended the inning and you made it hurt. And that's what you wanted to see. And then again later in the game, later in the game you had the air in center field. So LSU did great to take advantage of all of that. That was fantastic. Um, all right, let's look forward till tomorrow. It was huge. You only used two pitchers. You have everyone left. And remember what we said in the preview, jump, like uh, jump, and then whoever else you need to win it. You got two chances to win one. You need to go win this series on Friday night. Use whoever you have to. Worry about who you're going to start on Sunday, uh, excuse me, on Saturday. Worry about that on Saturday. Go win this game tomorrow at all costs. You need a big bounce back from Gage Jump. Hopefully you get it. I think that you will. Uh, you got it from Holman tonight. And you have Ackenhausen. You have Gidry. You have Uyoa. You have Lord. You have anyone else you want in the bullpen except for Griffin Herring. So you're in great shape from a pitching standpoint. What I want to see from the offense, 
Jump on Bryce Cunningham early. Let's see if you can get to that bullpen. You're going to see Vanderbilt's top bullpen arms in the game on Friday night. So see if you can jump on that. Y'all, it was a great win. It wasn't always pretty, but you needed it. And this is the old Kevin Malone from the office line, right? It's just nice to win one. Like, that's what you look at tonight for LSU. It's just nice to win one. And they needed it badly, and they got it. And they did some things well, and you saw some of the problems still exist that they need to work on, and they will. I, I have no doubt about that. So they're back in the win column, 21 and 10, now three and seven in conference play. They go for a series win tomorrow, and, and one that they really, really, really need. We got you covered here, wall to wall on Musa at the box. All the support greatly appreciated. Y'all smash the like button on the way out and get subscribed up as well. And of course, be here tomorrow for uh, Musa at the box.